Thank you, Adam. Uh, now let me introduce final uh, speaker on this panel, uh, Quentin Bajak, uh, who uh, became recently curator, chief curator of photography at the Museum of Modern Art in MoMA. Uh, prior to that, uh, Quentin worked uh, in other important institutions. Uh, first, uh, he was curator of photography in uh, Musée d'Orsay, uh, where he worked almost 10 years. And after that, uh, he worked for Centre Pompidou uh, in the Cabinet of Photography, uh, where he became chief curator in 2007. Uh, Quentin organized a number of important exhibitions, both on early photography, modern photography, and contemporary photography. Uh, Le Daguerreotis Francais in 2003, uh, Jacques-Henri L'Artique, Album d'une vie, uh, Bernd and Hila Becher, 2004, William Klein Retrospective, uh, Miroslav Tichy, uh, and uh, a large historical exhibition, La Subversion des Images Surrealism, Phot pho pho photographs, film, 2009, and finally in 2011, uh, Brancusi Images Sans Fin. He also uh, published a number of uh, books, uh, including uh, most recently Brassail, Le Flaner Nocturne, uh, 2012, par by par. Uh, discussions with promiscuous photographer 2011 uh, and uh, also written uh, for three volumes on history of photography from 2000 to 2010 uh, and uh, his uh, presentation uh, will address the issue of John Sarkovsky at MoMA uh, critical assessment. Thank you, Yaroslav. Uh, just a message for the translator. Uh, I did shorten my text, <laughs> so uh, I will, pro of course, follow it from page four, but I did remove a lot of things from page one to three. Um, so don't be surprised. Um, so I would like in the next 20 minutes to come back to um, what I would call the legacy of John Sarkovsky, who ran the Department of Photography um, at MoMA for more than 30 years, from 1962 to 1991. And uh, I would like to do it not only uh, from the outside, not only as a photo historian, uh, but also from the inside, as one of his two successors at the head of this department, uh, where, of course, probably today, his legacy is uh, stronger than in any other institution. So, I never met, in fact, John Sarkovsky, uh, and probably uh, some people in this room knew him. People who knew him said he was uh, brilliant, both eloquent and elegant, qualities that, in fact, I find quite obvious in that uh, snapshot. When I think of the very best portrait of the young Sarkovsky taken by uh, Jacques-Henri Lartigue at the Museum of Art in 63, uh, at the time of the opening of Lartigue's show. So, John Sarkovsky died in 2007, and to start uh, with, I would like to quote what uh, Maria Morris Hamburg, former director of the Department of Photography at the Metropolitan Museum of New York, was writing uh, in the October 2007 issue uh, of the art magazine Art Forum, so a few weeks after John Sarkovsky's death. Quote, it is rare for a curator to reign with virtual sovereignty over an entire medium but during his nearly, his nearly three decades as director of the Department of Photography at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, John Sharkovsky did." End of quote. Indeed, John Sharkovsky was probably the most influential uh, in photography curator of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, occupying, especially during the 60s and 70s, a prominent position in a context where very few institutions were interested in photography. First, a few facts and figures. John Sharkovsky succeeded Edward Steichen, uh, whose ideas he did not share, in fact, at the head of MoMA as Department of Photography in 1962 and retired in 1991. 
During this uh, 30 years tenure at the Museum of Modern Art, he personally curated 48 uh, um, one-person shows and 30 group shows. That is an impressive, amazing number of 78 shows. And in the 60s, he would in fact curate sometimes five shows a year. He, at the same time, he authored or co-authored more than 20 catalogues uh, published by the museum's publication department, including the four-volume book on Eugène Adjet, and highly influential books on the language of photography, The Photographer's Eyes, The Photographer's Eye, published in 66, and Looking at Photographs in 74, which is still today his most read publication. And if we turn to his acquisition policy, we are also facing impressive figures, under his leadership at MoMA, approximately 14,800 works were acquired. That is, in fact, more today than half of the total number of works included in MoMA's photographic collection because we have a rather small collection. Uh, the uh, collection uh, today is of 25,700 images. So I would like to come back to a few uh, ideas expressed by John Zarkovsky, and it will be a, a kind of answer to uh, Adam's uh, presentation. Uh, the first is that idea of an autonomous medium. So John Zarkovsky's first ambitious and programmatic exhibition was The Photographer's Eye in 1964. The catalog was published in 66, but the exhibition organized in 64. It was a loan show of uh, 202 photographs borrowed from public and private collections in the US and abroad. The works epitomized the visual and pictorial concepts that are peculiar to the photographic medium, ranging from the way photographers make use of significant detail and the picture edge, to explorations of time and motion. So it was accompanied by the publication that I mentioned. Even more than the publication, in fact, it is that publication, even more than the exhibition, it is in fact that publication uh, that was a statement about photography's autonomous medium. According to John Sarkovsky, photography was a visual language with its specificity, its syntax, and its own organic growth a medium, in fact, that is so as radically different from painting, and which main specificity and radical invention was uh, its close connection to reality and to realism. A medium that, has, that had its own history and role, and whose greatest accomplishment could be found in a documentary tradition of photographers favoring, and here I'm quoting Christopher Fouy Phillips, who wrote a magnificent uh, article on the, uh, the history uh, of uh, the Department of Photography of Mo uh, um, at MoMA, uh, an article published in 1982 um, in the October magazine, The Judgment Seat of Photography. And Christopher Phillips would say that that tradition was realistic description without overt prescription. So, Sarskovsky's genealogy of descriptive photography would go, of course, from uh, 19th century material, from, let's say, images from the Brady studio, to images of Eugène Adjet, uh, to Walker Evans, Eggleston, or Gary uh, Vinogrand. Just to put forward uh, a few of the photographers he championed. That was a very strict, uh, coherent, often and uh, brilliantly explain a uh, conception of photography, but in many ways, it was also a very limited one. Um, John Sarkovsky was definitely not interested by artists or photographers that were trying to break away from that tradition, even if he would seldom admit so. For example, in a 2006 interview published in Art in America, so one year after he, uh, before he died, he would say, I think with a rather by, bad faith, I quote him, no, it really never occurred to me that the photographers that we exhibited constituted some kind of logically coherent or prescriptive program. If you review our complete exhibition program during the years when I was at the museum, I think you will agree that the photographers could not possibly have regarded themselves as players in some kind of philosophic or aesthetic master plan." End of quote. To that quotation, we could oppose Peter Bunnell's words. Peter Bunnell was a curator at the Department of Photography from 65 to, 61, to 71, and who was saying in an interview with Arpert Percher, quote, one has only to look at John's book, The Photographer's Eye, 
to understand that his rather rigid formalist view of the medium, that he had a rather rigid formalist view of the medium that reflected an attitude that photo is about what is seen, end of quote. And if you review indeed that exhibition program, um, you will find that the Department of Photography, with very few exceptions, remained attached to that narrative of descriptive photography till the end of the 80s. But if you review at the same time the exhibition program, not of the Department of Photography, um, but of MoMA as an institution, you will see that John Sarkovsky's narrative began to be questioned and challenged as early as the beginning of the, the, the 70s inside the institution. By the end of the 60s, the art scene was changing rapidly and an ever increasing use of photography in artistic practices by artists that would not identify themselves as photographers was becoming central. There are at MoMA other voices telling other narratives more open to cross-disciplinary practices in photography, more in dialogue with other disciplines. Just to review a few examples of these exhibitions that were organized at MoMA, but not um, by the Department of Photography. Information, curated by Kinaston McShine in 70, around conceptual art, that intended to demonstrate the fact that conceptual art transcends the traditional categories of painting, sculpture, photography, film, drawing, prints, and that included, of course, a lot of photo-based work. Another example would be a photography into sculpture, which was organized by Peter Bonnell. Um, the show explored the relationship between photography and sculpture, and uh, I'm quoting, wanted to do a question that embraced concerns beyond those of the traditional print, and that was, in fact, a sequel to another show curated by Peter Bunnell two years before, Photography as Printmaking, that was also in fact trying to question the boundaries of photography. It's also interesting to note that especially in the 70s, a lot of photographers or artists using photography as their main medium were shown by MoMA outside the photo department, most, most notably in, a, in the context of a new program called Projects that was established at the museum in 71 uh, to present work by emerging artists and to also give the junior curatorial staff the opportunity to initiate and organize exhibitions of art new to the museum. So there were a lot of projects, uh, uh, exhibition in the early 70s that included photo-based or a photo work. I'm just listing a few of them. P18, which were images of performance by Ari Schunk and Janos Kander. Unique multiples about the relationship between sculpture and photography. Klaus Rinke, you see an installation view of the Klaus Rinke project exhibition in 73. Uh, Richard Long, another uh, exhibition uh, with uh, photo based work by Richard Long, 74. Ger van Elk, uh, the Dutch artist, 75. Uh, once again, uh, photo-based work, even if uh, Ger van Helk has a very hybrid practice, mixing painting and, 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 uh, and photography, or uh, radically photographic uh, work that is Bernd and Ila Becher, organized in 76, or we could also take some example, Bill Beckley, a conceptual artist uh, connected to, to narrative art uh, in 79. And during the same period, we can see that John Sarkovsky organized two exhibitions within the project framework, and that he remained absolutely faithful to his uh, idea and his conception of photography, because these two projects were the first one around Lee Friedlander in 73, and the second one around Ellen Levitt in 76. So when in uh, 1991, Peter Galassi succeeded John Sarkovsky at the head of the photography department, he, in fact, immediately addressed uh, this concern by organizing in the photo galleries a show that was uh, an answer to the numerous critics of, of that time about that narrow and sometimes autocratic vision of the museum's department of photography. The exhibition was called More Than uh, One Photography, and it showed photo works or photo-based works coming from all the department's collection, and not only uh, from the uh, department of photography, so from all the department's collection, especially from the Department of Painting and Sculpture, and that were often very cross-disciplinary works um, or photo-based uh, images. So that was a way to show that there was not one, one, not one voice, but different voices at MoMA and different narratives that were possible. But this was also a way for Peter Galassi uh, to move away from Justin Sarkovsky's conception of photography as a totally uh, autonomous medium 
uh, a position that was already at that time difficult uh, to assume. The other aspect I would like to talk about is the American perspective. Another characteristic of the story written by MoMA under John Sarkovsky's tenure was its American perspective. John Sarkovsky was writing that history from America and for America, a position that is today probably much more difficult, especially for a European, to accept. In his seminal essay, The Photographer's Eyes, John Sarkovsky acknowledged the influence of a book uh, written by John Kuvenhoven and published in 1948 called Made in America. It is in Kuvenhoven's book that he finds the relationship between the functional and the artistic, the importance of vernacular culture and its interaction with cultivated tradition, which is at the very core of his conception of photography. Kuvenhoven's book uh, Kuvenhoven's book was definitely an attempt to try to define what I would call the American characteristics of an American art, to identify and highlight in all the arts from painting to literature or architecture, the elements of creative vitality in American civilization and to get away from that idea that American civilization was only the product of Western European culture. This is a book about, about America, is indeed, in fact, the first sentence of Kuvenhoven's book. And in many ways, we could say that John Sarkovsky's History of Photography is about explaining the roots of American photography of his time and, as Kuvenhoven was doing in his book, to show how American photography, thanks to its vernacular tradition, is moving away from its European influence. It's interesting to see that, uh, of course, um, John Sarkovsky devoted many shows to modern European photography. And when I say modern, I mean photography from the first half of the 20th century, from L'Artic to Adjay, from Brassai to Bill Brandt or Kertesz. But as soon as you turn to more contemporary photographers, that is, photographers of his generation, emerging in the late 50s, 60s, and 70s, the ones that he presented at the museum are all American. Um, with very few exceptions. His most well-known exhibitions, new documents, showed three Americans, Friedlander, Arbus, and Vinogrand. And from the 20, one, 25 one-person shows that we could call contemporary that Sarkovsky organized at MoMA, only two are about non-American photographers, Cartier-Bresson, uh, recent photographs in 68, and Joseph Kudelka in 75. If we look at the 30 group shows, the same conclusion can be made because his first group show show, uh, shown at the museum was five unrelated photographers in 63. It was about five living photographers, all American. And the only intrusion into contemporary non-American photography were in 67, a European experience which showed the work of French and Belgian photographers, Denis Bria, Jean-Pierre Sud, and Pierre Cordier. And in 74, with new Japanese photography. So, and we can say that we can see also that this American centric views remained absolutely unchanged throughout his tenure, because when he, in 85, he decided to create a new series of exhibition called New Photography uh, that would um, create, that would take place every year to support emerging photographers, he personally curated three of these group shows without ever including a non American photographer. So you really had to wait uh, for the end of the 80s and of course for the arrival of, of Peter Galassi at the head of the department uh, from 91 to see non-American photographers being put forward and Gursky is one of the examples but I could uh, also quote Thomas Dimon, David Goldblatt, Michael Schmidt, Boris Mikhailov, uh, uh, just to name a few. Um, if you turn to MoMA's acquisition, uh, if you turn to MoMA's acquisition in the contemporary field uh, at that period, uh, you will see that this tendency remains, uh, because you can see, if you have a look at the Zarkovsky acquisition of contemporary photography, 88% uh, were uh, by US uh, photographers uh, in that period, uh, which is uh, a lot more, in fact, than Peter Galassi, 67, and Steichen, who was approximately 74% uh, uh, of uh, American photographers, contemporary photographers, acquired at that time. Um, 
The other um, aspect is vernacular. Um, hearing Sam uh, yesterday uh, talking about the Musée de l'Elysée, I have the feeling that one of John Sarkovsky's most living aspect of his legacy uh, is today the inclusion of vernacular photography in the history of photography. Of course, John was not the first one uh, in doing so. There were from the 20s and 30s a lot of photographers, including most notably Moholy that had put forward the importance of vernacular photography. But uh, it's true that John Sarkovsky was definitely, it seems to me, the first curator to take that into account and to put it um, and to include it both in his exhibition and in his acquisition policy and to include that vernacular photography uh, in um, his way of thinking. I'm going a little faster than expected, um, and I wanted to show you a few images uh, of what I would call vernacular photography, which is not snapshot photography, but is, which is all about all non-artistic practices. Let's go to the final and I think maybe more important part of that uh, legacy, which is the medium-specific galleries uh, that were uh, installed at MoMA. Um, it is at the very same first time that uh, John Sarkovsky was championing photography as an autonomous medium um, that uh, opened at the museum some independent photography galleries, which were called the Edward Sykin Photography Center, that opened on May, uh, in May. Uh, 1964, and uh, with a center, a library, but also a permanent gallery space for changing exhibition of about 170 prints from the collection, and there was also a space for temporary loan show. So it is in that uh, the space that um, for 50 years or so was presented uh, the history of photography as an independent medium. It's true that MoMA was the place where you could see in the 60s, 70s, and again 80s uh, the history of photography told from early to contemporary photography in, I would say, uh, approximately 150 uh, images. At MoMA, I would say that uh, this situation is still true today, where each department has its own space. Um, I don't know why I don't have it, so I have to go back, sorry. To that uh, uh, map of the third floor of the museum, which is the floor of the photo galleries, uh, these are the photo galleries, the six space. You have here the prints department, you have here the architecture and drawing department, and also uh, uh, architecture and design department, and here the design department. So um, the situation uh, with these medium specific galleries has for me two disadvantages. The first is uh, strictly connected to the architecture of the photo galleries that were specifically designed to present that chronological display of the collection. You see here on the map, the, the, the visitor enters that way. Uh, so you have a row of three rather small uh, rooms and then some bigger rooms. So it, this is really designed uh, for that chronological narrative, starting with small images, uh, daguerreotypes, early paper prints, and then getting bigger and bigger, and ending with large color pictures. Uh, some of the very large uh, contemporary images uh, can be shown, in fact, only in that uh, large space. They can't be shown here. So this is a very heavily designed space that is not today really adapted uh, to different narratives, uh, thematic rather than chronological, for example, that would try to mix historical, modern, and contemporary material. I know this because I'm working on a project mixing uh, historical, modern, and contemporary, and I have problem with that space. But the second and last, uh, Yaroslav, um, uh, the second and in a way more important drawback is that it offers the visitors a medium-specific galleries uh, for the history of photography. Um, that it offers uh, the visitors a medium-specific narrative for the history of photography. And is it today the kind of narrative that MoMA should write? I'm not sure. Uh, if you have a look at uh, MoMA today, photography has expanded far beyond the limits of its galleries in the collection galleries. You have here uh, the second floor uh, with a lot of uh, contemporary photography included in the present display. You have here a uh, collection show about American modernism, including a lot of images uh, that are shown with sculpture, paintings, drawings, and prints. And you have also 
here on the fourth floor, inside the painting and sculpture uh, galleries, a uh, collection show devoted to Walker Evans' American photographs. So photography is expanding. And we are addressing today an audience which is more interested in and also much more knowledgeable about photography and its history than it was 40, 30, or even 20 years ago. Thanks to John Sarkovsky and thanks to others, curators, historians, photographers, dealers, who were in the past 40 years great advocates of photography as an autonomous medium, I feel that today we do not need to do this anymore, that we can turn to different narratives and try to tell the history of photography in different way. For MoMA, that would be a wholly integrated narrative that would integrate all the department's collection, that, that, would, that would be in line with the ideas expressed by Alfred Barr, uh, the first uh, director of the museum, about interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approach of the, of, of the history of 20th century art. Even if I do not agree with John Sarkovsky's narrative, it had its impact, probably its part of truth, and its seductive power. It corresponded to a moment in time when there was still the need to highlight that photographic specificity. Today, it's probably time, I think, to go on and to avoid what I would call a fossilization of the history of photography as an art form. We must, I think, try to think a history of art that would, at last, totally encompass the photographic medium with all its disruptive nature. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and now uh, I ask uh, the other two panelists to join us for uh, questions and answers. So I think uh, we uh, had a wonderful composition of these panels because uh, they address uh, basically very similar, if not the uh, same issues. And uh, uh, so uh, are there any questions? Or maybe first uh, you might ask uh, each other a question. microphone. I think it was almost in response to your presentation that I was trying to explain we can't at the Getty do displays of the kind that you hope apparently to achieve at MoMA simply because we don't have modern art in the collection. Um, so we are in some ways obligated to use the photography galleries to tell as much of the story as possible. Um, we did take uh, MoMA's exhibition, Walker Evans and Company, which was a terrific show yes. that combined that's painting, that's sculpture, photography, prints, um, and, but it's very rare that we take a lone exhibition um, that has so many works that are not of the kind that the museum collects. Any questions? Yes. Um, I have a question for Mr. Bajak. Um, I know you already said that you you don't want to be a curator that is as much maybe groundbreaking as Mr. Sharkovsky, but I still would like to know which one of the uh, Mr. Sharkovsky's exhibition you think is the most groundbreaking for photography. Well, I think that uh, John had a great 15, first 15 years at MoMA from, let's say, uh, 60, uh, 62 to uh, the mid-70s to or maybe to 78, to Mirrors and Windows, with uh, three really important either exhibition or publication that were about uh, uh, 
both American photography and photography as a visual language that were the photographer's eye that I mentioned, 64, and the publication in 66, um, looking at photographs, and the mirrors and windows, the exhibition organized in, the, in 78. So what I think, it, what I think is important with, with John Sharkovsky is that he managed both to do some group shows that were about uh, the visual culture and photography as a visual language, but also to do some uh, very specific uh, solo shows uh, that were about authors. And I think that you have a great balance that was also in a way that balance of, that Edward Steichen had in the 50s between shows that focus on photography as a whole uh, and on the photography as a specific language and to try also to identify in that uh, photographic um, whole some uh, more interesting authors. Um, so I would say uh, these uh, these exhibition, and it's true that I would after even if that was that wonderful uh, AJ exhibitions and uh, and publications uh, at the turn of the 70s and the early 80s that he uh, co-curated and co-authored with Maria Morris um, Hamburg at that time. Um, I think that uh, Sharkovsky's work of the 80s is less interesting, and I must say that uh, his last publication at the museum, which is uh, Photography Until Now, that he did in, in 89-90 for the 150th anniversary of the divulgation of photography, is in a way uh, quite traditional, uh, because uh, he goes back to a kind of history um, of photography with... Um, highlighting some technical changes, which, which is to me in a way coming back to very outmoded and old-fashioned ways of telling the history of photography. And maybe if I can extend this question to other panelists, do you think it's more important for a photography curator to create those groundbreaking exhibitions or just to introduce uh, current trends in photography to the audience? I think it very much depends on the exhibition, excuse me, the institution. Um, I didn't show too much in the way of uh, recent acquisitions of contemporary work at the Getty Museum, but we have often been asked the question whether it's the goal of the Getty to discover new photographers, and I would say the answer to that is no, because there are other institutions in Los Angeles that take on that role whether it is the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art, the Hammer Museum, or the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. So in some ways, um, the fact that our collection is grounded in the 19th century and first half of the 20th century may feel a little conservative, but it allows us to more selectively move forward into the 20th and 21st century. I don't think the, the goal of um, creating groundbreaking exhibitions for, for the sake of creating groundbreaking exhibitions is um, necessary. If it occurs that exhibitions are accepted as such, that's fantastic, but I don't know that curators necessarily always strive to achieve the most original exhibition to date. I don't know if you agree or disagree with that, but... Well, I think what is interesting uh, in the context of John Sharkovsky's um, shows is that uh, the question whether it's possible to make um, such groundbreaking exhibitions, photography exhibitions, but groundbreaking for art in general, or like uh, um, for whole MoMA, for instance. Yes, this is the question I think also for you. And uh, the, the answer of the curators in, uh, in Wuch is that no, it's not possible anymore, that we have to think about groundbreaking exhibitions in a totally different way. Uh, that means uh, that photo photography is not something exclusive or autonomous, yes, but it has to be included to this uh, much bigger shows, like uh, this correspondences that I was showing you the, the, the catalog of, and it was like the huge exhibition uh, with uh, using photography in a way. Which is maybe which is maybe a too radical point of view, because uh, we must keep in mind that some uh, artists today are 
sticking to photographic medium. There are still photographers sticking to the medium and we must not uh, give up doing some medium specific shows and focusing on photography. So uh, we must not, after having talked about photography as an autonomous medium, suddenly try to say no. We're into a kind of postmodern era uh, in which, a postmodernist era in which uh, each discipline uh, should be mixed. But I think uh, we should maybe come back to not with what uh, uh, kind of second modernist approach of uh, very specific autonomous mediums, but maybe try to go back to that feeling of the 20s and 30s, that, that of that very early modernism where. Uh, artists would uh, from some time off very often go to one technique to another and had that very more interdisciplinary uh, approach. This is probably what we should do, go, going back to high modernism uh, rather than a kind of late 40s or 50s uh, modernism, which was in fact much influenced by Greenberg and American perspectives. <laughs> yes. Dziękuję bardzo. Chciałbym zapytać My question to Quentin Bajak. Just a while ago, I heard a very significant. Uh, just a moment ago, I heard a very significant information. related to the interdisciplinary vision at MoMA. Could you please expand on that? Uh, is it also your viewpoint that uh, photography is redefining its role from the inside? Is that related to your approach? Yes, probably. Probably it has to do with the uh, technical changes that that occurred in the for the photographic medium in the in the last uh, 20 years, and the fact that uh, um, probably uh, any anyway, in a way I would say thanks thanks to the shift from uh, analog to digital, uh, we are more aware of the fact that uh, photographic practices were. Uh, very diverse and in fact right from the start for right from from the inception of photography uh, photography could not be limited that uh, as would john sarkovsky put it uh, of, about an image taken but uh, there were images taken but there were also image made, uh, images made, uh, at, especially at that time. If you take uh, as early as uh, 1840, uh, the uh, Bayard autoportrait en noyer is an image which is not taken, but it's an image that is staged uh, and, and made. Uh, and there was also that, uh, that kind of uh, difference, that, that kind of uh, um, idea that uh, photography was only about an image taken. Now we realize with the digital that uh, a photographic image can be uh, taken, can be made, can be realized in many different ways. Um, that it's not always, that it doesn't have to be especially connected to, to uh, the idea of realism or the description of reality. Uh, and that uh, we can find many examples uh, in its history and uh, many uh, photographers that worked uh, in different ways. And I think in a way uh, maybe uh, for the uh, for let's say uh, 100 years from the uh, 
end of the 19th century to, uh, let's say, the 60s or 70s, there was that idea of a very close connection, be connection between photography and, uh, and that kind of uh, descriptive ta task or documentary task. And I think that uh, today, uh, and I would say once again, thanks to that, uh, to, 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 to that, uh, to that shift, uh, things are changing and the perspectives we have on photography are changing. And we discovered that uh, photography uh, is in a way uh, an image and is today uh, totally part of that uh, visual culture. Mm. Uh, I would like to ask a question too, um, because uh, all three presentations were not only about curatorial practices, it was also pointing out how important is the interplay between the curator and the institution. And, uh, we see that uh, institutions have their own life. Uh, you mentioned something uh, like process of ossification, going from the initial uh, kind of visionary concept, which was very much inspired by the avant-garde movements in Europe uh, between the two wars, and how gradually these departments become kind of insulated in their, on their own turfs. And, and so uh, the question is how uh, able are those institutions to re revitalize themselves, that's sometimes very, very difficult. Uh, so, so that's, I think, very um, important issues because um, then the role of uh, curator is very much uh, dependent on, on the state of the institutions and, and MoMA is, is a, I, I would say, textbook case for that because uh, as I lived uh, in New York for many years, I do remember the ongoing debate and crit criticism of MoMA. And it was not only John Sarkovsky, it was also Bill Rubin who was chief curator, so maybe the spiritus against behind Of course, MoMA. of course, yeah, that, that, that was, there was at MoMA a totally different culture in the 70s, 80s, and you're, you're absolutely right to, to point out the fact that we're talking here about John Sarkovsky, but in a way, the same analysis could be made for other departments of MoMA at the same time, including, of course, Bill Rubin for the painting and sculpture department. So uh, this were, and there was at MoMA in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, a kind of silo culture of each department working uh, on its own, sometimes competing one with each other, uh, <laughs> uh, in fact. And uh, it seems that uh, an all writing that kind of uh, history uh, of uh, its medium uh, without uh, even taking into, into account uh, what the other departments were doing. So I think that uh, times are changing. I think that uh, uh, we now have a new generation of, uh, of chief curators. Uh, we have uh, that uh, impulse or that uh, will to maybe to go back to uh, yeah what was the foundation of, of MoMA? Uh, it's not uh, of course going back to the 30s and 20s and 30s without noticing that things have changed. <laughs> um, but uh, it's uh, probably once again putting forward that idea of uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, which was uh, which was really important uh, to Alfred Barr and which is I think uh, today important for uh, for contemporary artists because uh, as I was saying there are of course some artists and some very good ones that stick to their medium but there's also a lot of artists that go from one medium to another and that just want to express an idea and to express that idea choose uh, whatever medium they think is the most appropriate to do so. Mm -hmm. So I think on that wonderful note, we can end our uh, panel and... Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I will only add one more thing, okay, to how to this wonderful panel, as you said. But um, uh, uh, what I think that the difference is, uh, uh, or my impression is that basically this end of, um, there is the end of this um, like kingdoms of curators like Sharkovsky, for example, or, or Galassi, as that they were like... Uh, making this process of fossilization going on and on. That uh, um, The example that I gave with this Museum of Modern Art in, um, uh, in Łódź is, is pretty telling, namely that uh, the story of a curator, like, you know, this Ursula Czartoryska is a bit like, you know, New Hall of Polish photography or Sharkovsky of Polish photography, was simply erased and nobody cared about it. And uh, now the curators who are invited to curate shows are simply using this without 
referring to this context, which is very specific, as uh, who knows about John Sharkovsky's shows from like the um, 70s, like we know, yes, but the general audience who's going to the shows doesn't care. And actually also the management of the uh, institutions, uh, you know, they, are, they, are, they want to have the successful blockbusters exhibitions rather than um, like paying tribute um, uh, all the time to the uh, uh, curators from the past, even though they were very, very uh, important. And so this is like the, the big change that they are t caring about the shows that uh, were called groundbreaking or whatever, like successful shows, rather than about this uh, um, like um, uh, dynasties of um, uh, important creators or chiefs of departments uh, uh, in the um, in the museums. So this is something that I think is very. Um, uh, interesting, but also dangerous. Yes, of what these curators, like the new curators, do with them, with the past, they don't care. This is uh, like my impression of what I, what I've seen. And on the other side, this uh, Wrocław Museum gives the example of the of this fossilization going on. Yes, so there will be a curator who will leave sooner or later, and he will uh, left behind I don't know 10,000 photographs collected and uh, oh, and 40 years of his life there. Yes, but it's like. Basically, this over this this era. This is my impression. Any? Yes, I have a question to to Quentin. I just ask uh, when you <laughs> were speaking. Um, there was some discussion between John Sarkovsky and the Pension Sculpture Department because. The, the MoMA was the only one institution who collect photography, so perhaps Sarkovsky says, okay, I'm the only one, so I collect different kind of photography, and the painter and sculpture department collects the photography that he's normally in the art because it's doing by artists, so it's, it's a part of art, we know that, because it's artists uh, who do it. It and the John Sarkozy say, "Okay, I take the other part of photography. That's not a part of art." Now. That was not how how it worked. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was definitely not how it worked. Uh, there were, of course, uh, some probably some conversation at that time. Yet, been, uh, um, with the department, but. Um, but no, really, really, at that time, at that time, uh, there, was, that was, there was that big change that occurred in the arts in the late 70s and late 60s and early 70s, and that John really didn't take into account at that time. Uh, he probably should have been more aware uh, of that, and uh, probably maybe should have been more aware of some voices inside his department of younger curators, including Peter Burnell or uh, Dennis Longwell at that time, who were more interested in, uh, in other practices, uh, and he did not. So when I was talking about autocracy, that was also that. He was, he was great in many ways, but he had his, his very own restricted uh, view also, and uh, he should have at that time, uh, taken more taken into account uh, some voices coming also uh, from inside his department. Hmm. Carolina, it's... Uh... <laughs> okay, thank you very much.